we're hey, gonna have to cool. gather around the campfire for this one. <laughs> Wait, do I think I got a campfire? Funny enough, make some s'mores in maybe. one of these. I don't know if I got a campfire. Oh, around can you make We could just. Thing? I wish you could. Unless it was a mod. Eventually, at some point, whenever we do a new Minecraft series, I'm going to try and make a server and we can actually have good mods so we can do Sick. more. I guess down here it could count as a camp campfire. So, Alright, begin your uh, infamous tale of From the Ashes Phoenix in International Race. I mean, where do I even start? Like, Start at the beginning. Um, well, technically, the beginning is all the way back when Ty Dillon called me out. <laughs> okay, no, yep. no, I'm stupid. There he goes. That. Oh, there's a campfire. Oh, oh sick. Nice. There's a campfire. All right. So, okay, uh, I'm stupid. Who's Ty Dillon? He is the plastic spoon. Of NASCAR. He's okay. he's the brother of Austin Dillon, who drives the three car now. Okay. Yeah, so he saw my rant video after the 2018 Daytona 500, and he called me out on Twitter. And from there, he said that he wanted to meet me at a racetrack. So originally, I was going to go to Chicagoland, but um, <coughs> that was too expensive. Couldn't find a good uh, plane for that. Um, so we waited and waited, and finally November comes around. So about, what, nine months after he actually called me out. And... Um, <laughs> I found some good plane tickets. I found a good uh, uh, car rental service and headed down to Phoenix for uh, four days, I think it was. The first day I just saw my uncle. He lived in Yuma. We went to the... Ow. ow. Yeah, don't stand <laughs> the fire. Fire hurts. <laughs> fire hurts. It's probably not a good idea to put the campfire in here, but... It's good for Oh, well. Go continue. Yeah. I'm sure we won't die of asphyxiation from the smoke or anything. <laughs> but continue. Okay, so, I uh, went to... I was on Thursday. I got there on Wednesday. Actually, the whole driving from Phoenix to Yuma in the middle of the night nearly drove me insane. <laughs> I got there at 4 in the morning, and when I actually showed up at my uncle's house, the door was not unlocked, and I had to sleep in the car. In his driveway. Oh, wow. <laughs> Needless to say, in the video that he did, the documentary he did of this, he kept uh, recording random shit while he was driving and listening to tunes. <laughs> and I'll never forget, we're 60 miles out! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was when you officially lost it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And then I had to change uh, cameras during that because my iPod ran out of space or battery or something. Uh, that was the worst, but Thursday, nothing much happened. We just kind of hung out. On Friday, I actually drove back to Phoenix in the day so that I didn't go insane. That was a good one. Um, that Friday, uh, I actually got, or was it Saturday? One of the two, I met Bob Pockris and shook his hand. That was pretty sick. Oh. Hmm. Um, who all did I? I, did I got a selfie it. with Alex Bowman, Bumble Wallace. Uh, nice. There was one more before I actually saw Ty at the uh, Twisted T branded uh, kind of, you know, outlet thing. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that was the selfie that shook the world. I think that was my most liked tweet ever for like a good year. <laughs> um, drank some twisted tea with the twisted tea driver. That was pretty sick. Um, but that night was when Brett Moffat beat Gregson on the final restart, and like I witnessed that. I was oh, like, yeah. oh my god! Oh yeah! <laughs> that was the most. I was like, I was really under control in the grandstands because I didn't want to get thrown out. But like, I was considering like hopping the fence and just running the victory lane. <laughs> 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 but yeah, kept control of myself, man. And that was the Friday. 
that was Friday. I was still there for Saturday and Sunday, and those days weren't very interesting because I didn't actually have a, the pit pass until Sunday. Mm. So technically, I wasn't actually allowed in there on Thursday, even though they let me in for some reason. I don't know. Maybe they were just feeling feeling kind of nice about it. Maybe. They saw your video and were like, all right, let's just, let's just let them in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they probably thought I'd like break something and get, I don't know. <laughs> I <laughs> want you to make a scene. Yeah. Um, Saturday was pretty boring. Not much happened. Sunday was the day that I got to go to the infield and meet Casey Mears, which was probably the highlight of my life so far. <laughs> and you had no idea he was going to be there. <laughs> I didn't know it was there because it was like during a practice session on like Saturday when they just randomly said over the speakers, all right, everyone. So, you know, tomorrow we're doing the infield thing and there's going to be people talking and I'm just, at this point, I'm just randomly walking through the through the place, just gazing and just awestruck at this facility. And he just randomly says over the intercom, I just barely make out Casey Mears and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, is, is he going to be here? Is he going to be here? Like, <laughs> and you were initially disappointed Corbett Forrester wasn't Yes, there. I was. I, I like when I actually bought the tickets the web back that was like in October I was like you know I really don't even want to go there if he's not going to be there and then he didn't he wasn't there and I was like well can't go back now <laughs> have you met him yet or no no we've just talked on over the phone that's all we've done I saw you got your little logo on his truck yeah it's cool it's supposed to be there the whole season but I didn't see it at uh, Las Vegas. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you got to meet Casey, and not whoever forget your famous quote, if I had known you would be here, I would have brought you something real to sign. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which, that, that had to suck. But, uh, of course, uh, the quick story of you meeting Matt Hardy, of all people. The quick story of Matt Hardy. Like, okay, so um, I was... Standing in line, this was happening, if you'll remember the part where I get everyone to shout, all the drivers to shout people out. Yeah. It was right after that, or right before that, one or the other. <clears throat> and he came out of the media center and was just kind of doing like a MRN interview, and I was just watching from the side like, is that Matt Hardy? <laughs> <laughs> is that Matt Hardy? And I'm like... And he Holy was just hanging out. It, it was. It really was. He's not as tall as I thought it would be, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah, he was only like an inch or two taller than you. Yeah, that was the craziest part. But yeah, he, he was just there and he's giving an interview. And I'm just watching. He's kind of surrounded by media, obviously. Everyone's getting their microphones yeah. in his face. But like right when he was done, I asked if I could get a selfie with him. And the guy that he was with took the phone. And that's like the only time the entire weekend that I took a, that I was in a picture that I wasn't actually holding the phone. So everything you saw from me was self done. <laughs> but he took it and like and we just had a selfie moment and I was like that that was the first time that I communicated with my mother the entire trip was I just sent her that selfie. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even ask if I survived like the plane trip, like driving across Arizona just wow. the wilderness. Right on the drive, yeah. Yeah, just completely complete radio silence. But <laughs> but that like that was our first moment of communication, obviously. <laughs> How old is your mother, by the way? Um, like 41, 42. Damn. Wow, your mom is younger than me. <laughs> yeah, that's an even longer story. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, but. <laughs> huh, what? How old are you? Uh, 22. You're 22, okay. Oh, so yeah. she had you when she was 19. 19. 18. Makes sense. Oh. 18, okay. Well, either yeah. way, it makes sense. Yeah, well, hey. Like I said, long story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that was pretty, that, that was one of your best, uh, videos you ever did, that whole From the Ashes. I watched that whole thing. The oh, funniest God. thing was to fucking drive to Yuba. Just yeah, because of how rambly you were. Yeah, I was kind of wondering I had... when I was editing that, like, is this a bit much? <laughs> is an hour of driving a bit much? 
<laughs> the answer is yes, by the way, but I still put it in. <laughs> We're 60 miles out! <laughs> uh... <laughs> I wish I had the charisma that you have for me to want to do something like that and <laughs> go to a completely far away state yeah, just for right. something like a WrestleMania or something like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. It's like when I used to drive home from Ring of Honor and work in the ring crew there driving to Philly. Uh, man, those drives home, driving home. Four in the morning, everything is hilarious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> static on the radio you're just laughing at it it is ridiculous. <laughs> we're, like, we're like shot we're exhausted we driving from Rutland Vermont where I was living at the time to Philadelphia that's a seven hour trip so I gotta get up at six in the morning get picked up by my buddy we drive down to Philadelphia to get there at one o'clock wait for the ring crew the ring truck to show up rest of the road crew shows up we have to bring everything from the truck inside the building, guardrails, chairs, the ring, um, just everything. Black tarps, got to put the tarps up, put up the chairs, put up the railway, the guardrails, put up the ring. Then you um, run out to maybe get a sandwich if you're lucky. Then you go and hang in the locker room, say hi to everybody. Then you work security of the show. Show's over, then you got to tear everything down. Pack it back up in the truck. It's now one in the Damn. one in the morning. Then hopefully make it to Tony Luke's to get a cheesesteak. Then on the road, <laughs> seven hours back to Rutland. I'm home twenty five hours later with no sleep. Didn't get paid for it because this is paying your dues, kid. And Ooh. it was the most fun you'd ever had. <laughs> Dude, I'm in the Well, it's room. easy to say when you're young like that. Well, I wasn't even that young. This is two thousand two. This is eighteen years ago. So I'm like what, twenty um, t- 20, 28. 28. That was the year I was born. There you go. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm in the locker room. There's AJ Styles. There's Christopher Daniels. There's Samoa Joe. There's CM Punk. There's Steve Carino. There's Homicide. There's uh, fucking, you know, just everybody who, who has become a star. Low key is Damn, there. You know? Just, just got to mm-hmm. hang out with these guys. And my friend, Matt Knowles, HC Loke, was in charge of the ring crew. So, I just had an in with him and. Uh, a couple of the guys on the ring crew got to do spots on the show. We all got beat up by Logan DeVito at a couple of his shows. And <laughs> I got I got bit in the head by Abdullah the Butcher, and you know I got hit in the head with a chair by Dan Moff. Never do that, by the way. Uh, if, you have, <laughs> if you have the if you have the option, say no. Because um, Dan to a headshot with a chair. Yeah, because Dan don't hold back, and I I was smart. I put my hands up. Thought I broke my hands from the impact. Then oh. he hit this kid that we drove down with. And he broke the chair of the kid's head. It was a plastic chair. Thank God. <laughs> he That's just one good. shot, bang, thing obliterated. And Jeez. Rob went down. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's just it was a lot of fun. But, man, and those drives home, man. Oh, like I said, 3.34 in the morning, you're just saying the dumbest shit. You were just having, you're just exhausted. You can't sleep. You sleep. The driver sleeps. You die. So you all have to <laughs> yeah. Stay yeah. It was road trips, man. Oh, I did that for a year, and my last show I did, uh, the Great Muda was on it, and I was too scared to say hi to him. <laughs> <laughs> I was not about to call to hello, sir, nice to meet you. Although I did say hi to like, like so, uh, Satoshi Kojima, I met him. Kazayashi, I met him. Um, they were very cool. Um, oh, let's see, who else was down there? Big stars down there, Raven. Raven's just, Raven's just weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Scotty's a good guy. He's annoying as hell. I did Polaroids <laughs> for him. This is back when he had Polaroid cameras, people. And uh, <laughs> they charged 10 bucks for Polaroids, you know, with the stars and stuff. And I would take the picture for him and shit. And I'm like, hey, you got to hold it wrong there. Yeah, you got to put it like that. Hey, hold it like that. I'm like, oh, shut up, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> I respect the hell out of you, and I copied you when I started wrestling, but fuck, shut up. Uh, <laughs> and uh, who else? Is it? Dusty Rhodes, got to meet him. He's um, so many great guys. And by the way, Dylan, were you here in the session whenever Scott said that he's actually friends with Bobby Fish? No. Um, yeah, I didn't actually, even know that. Uh, Bob and I went to the same high school. Um, he's younger than me, so... Um, I think he's younger than your mom. <laughs> yeah, I think in Bobby, I think Bobby's like thirty nine, almost thirty nine. Yeah, thirty nine, almost forty. Yeah, so we were the same high school, but different classes. Um, he was trained by Tony DeVito, 
and he and I kind of ran in some of the same circles. So we were on some of the same shows, but we didn't know each other. We didn't know that we went to the same high schools at that point. I was like four years in the business. He was just starting. And of course, he's way better than I ever was. Um, right. But um, <laughs> eventually, he, he went to one of my best friend's training schools. I went there. We wrestled each other, trained together. He is one of the best guys. I'm ecstatic about, you know, the opportunities he's got. It's like like Alex Webster. Way cool, down to earth. Um, you know, he's at that level in his life where there's like no ego, very appreciative of everything. He's worked his ass off to get there. At his age, at the injuries he's had, he's still kicking ass. He's still doing great stuff. I message him every once in a while, just say, hey, man, great match. He's like, thanks, bud. Good to talk to you. You know, real quick. Nothing. I'm, I'm not like <laughs> best friends or like that, but he is a friend of mine. When I was booking shows, I had him on my shows. I paid him out of pocket to be there. And he was nothing but professional and cool and everything else. So, you know. <laughs> I always got love for Bob. And you know, uh, this stock came to my head. Wouldn't it be funny if, like, randomly one time Bobby's taking time off? Wouldn't it be cool if you could get him onto our fucking crazy fest here on this <laughs> Minecraft shit? <laughs> I, think he I don't games. even know if he plays Minecraft. No, he doesn't. He's not much a game. Uh, he did um, Up, Up, Down, Down. It was all yeah. awesome, Undisputed Era and Up, Up, Down, Down. And they talked about doing games. He's like, he was never a big game guy. He's a jock. You know, he played football right. and, and all that stuff in high school and, and college. Which makes sense. He's a, he, was a, he was a teacher. My nephew had him as a teacher going to the same high school we did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it was so weird. Because I, I went to see um, I just went to a wedding or something like that. And my nephew was there. It's my stepsister's son. And he said, how do you know Mr. Fish? I said, excuse me? Mr. Fish, teacher. Oh, Bob? Yeah, I know Bob. <laughs> like, Fuck Mr. Fish, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> Respected shit. But, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You know, that reminds me of actually my buddy Kyle Matthews. He's from Dayton. And he went to uh, the same high school Chris Hero went to. Oh, no shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I and I always like Chris Hero, even though he's not really doing much right now. No, I was always a fan of Chris, too. But I never got to meet yeah. him. I don't think I ever met Chris Hero. No. Oh, funny punk story. See, I'm punk story. Oh, um, Dylan's going to love this. Yeah. Um, I worked the uh, the first anniversary Ring of Honor show. This is in Queens, New York, at the um, the Elks Lodge, where ECW <clears throat> shows. Um, long story. I'm not going to get into the whole details. But we're in the locker room. Me and my buddy Walter, uh, who I do the Necrocastic on podcast with, uh, Levi, uh, he's on yep. the show with me. Uh, I brought Walter down to help out with the ring crew, and <laughs> Walter's on the phone in the locker room, on the phone talking to his wife. And he's like, yeah, yeah, honey. yeah, honey, yeah, yeah, honey. Punk walks up behind Walter, takes his phone, starts put talking on the phone. Uh-huh, 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 yeah, uh-huh, sure, hon, uh-huh, uh-huh. He answered back to Because <laughs> at that point, Jen, uh, Walter's wife, Jen, she's a she's a badass from Staten Island. We call her Baby Brody because she will kill you. And um, <laughs> she's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Hands it back to Walter. Walter fits the conversation. Punk goes, I'm sorry, dude. I didn't mean to be a dick. I'm punk. Nice to meet you. <laughs> 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 and Walter's like, oh, okay, yeah. Hi, Walter. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm so fucking, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it was so that is cool. insane. Yep. That is funny. Uh, that's when they had the fucking riot and not all of us <clears throat> know, knew it was going to happen. Oof. I missed wow. that meeting. <laughs> you wow. got guys jumping the fucking rail and shit, and they're like, what the hell is going on? Is this part of the show? We don't know. And it's like the, You see some of the guys on the ring crew and some of the other wrestlers kind of grabbing at them and stuff. Like, okay, okay, it's 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 part of the show. It's cool. So you just like grab guys <laughs> and start pushing back and forth and shit and pushing back. And everyone goes back in the locker room and everyone's like high-fiving and shit, and they're like, oh, my God, everyone's on their phone talking about it. It's getting so much press right now. It's incredible. So... But, yeah, uh, yeah. My wife um, was there too with some friends, and she w- she went to the be- she actually went into the ladies' room, and AJ Styles' wife, then girlfriend, was in there right. uh, talking on her phone. <laughs> like, yeah, they had this riot thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alan's okay. He wasn't involved in it. <laughs> <laughs> talking like his mom or something. I don't know. Yeah, that that's funny. Uh, but uh, the one story I have with. Uh, I actually got a couple of stories of meeting uh, athletes and whatnot. First, uh, I was only 10 when this happened. 
It was Valentine's Day 2005, Monday Night Raw, me and my brother Rue, God rest his soul, we uh, went to Cincinnati at the U.S. Bank Arena to go see Monday Night Raw, and this was the week before No Way Out that year, which was SmackDown at the time. And they were doing uh, this uh, angle with Batista, because he had just won the Royal Rumble, where he had a match with Edge, but it ended in a DQ, I think. And he went outside and saw JBL's limo, and about ran him over, but Triple H pushed him out of the way. But uh, the kicker of the story was, after my dad, my brother, and I were on our way back home, we're at a stop sign... And this car pulls up next to uh, my dad's truck. And these two ladies roll the window down asking my dad for directions to the interstate. Mm -hmm. The two ladies that were in the car? Christy Hemme and Candace Michelle. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) And my brother Rue was on the phone talking to our cousin. And he's like, holy shit, that's Christy Hemme and Candace Michelle in the next car over. (laughs) That's awesome. Uh, So that was the first one. Mm Mm-hmm. Then the second story, this was actually pretty recent. Uh, Dylan, I think I may have told you this. If not, I'll say it here. I went to mid-Ohio for the Xfinity race last August for my birthday. Big mistake, considering the guy I hate the most in that series won the damn race. But uh, I'm not getting into that. Um, but the best part of the whole trip, me and my dad, we were walking around like the haulers. Well, not the haulers, but like the merch booths. We was hoping to get a pit pass, but they didn't have any for sale. But we saw that they had the stadium super trucks after the Xfinity race, even though we didn't stay for that because we were just so sunburned, and I was just so pissed that Syndic won. <laughs> so I was just like, fuck this, I'm getting out of here. But we knew there was a su- stadium super trucks race happening, and we're walking through that area, and we see fucking Robbie Gordon, and I'm like, that dude that's fucking robbie gordon and then we got to meet him and he was so cool i don't get why people hate him he's a really fucking cool dude and i actually told him a quick story of how i first remembered him the when he threw the helmet at michael walter (laughs) (laughs) and he laughed it off thought it was funny so that was really really cool i i saw casey mears's truck but he wasn't by and i was like ah shit that would have been cool uh guy i know uh yeah Saw him at Mid Ohio last year, actually. Ah, but needless to say, I'm not going back to that track for Xfinity as long as Syndics in that <laughs> damn series because I don't want to see that. Uh, but anyways, uh, story time over. So let's just get back to business. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna bug out of here. So ah, nice one. yeah. Well, I'll give you one more quick story and then I'll take off here. Um, you and you know what? Out. Actually, after this story, uh, we'll finish the okay. session. Uh, the real quick story is... Um, so this is going to be a whole episode. <laughs> just story, all on itself. Story, story, story time. time. Hardcore storytelling. Um, this is uh, this has nothing to do with anybody famous or anything like that, but this is kind of the stupid shit you do on the road. As ah. I said, I drive, drive my old buddy Andy. We both lived in Rutland, Vermont, and drive down to Philly to do the Ring of Honor shows and all that stuff, and after the show, we go to Tony Luke's, we get a cheesesteak, and we get back on the road. So we stop, get the cheesesteak, we're in the car, it's me, Andy, another friend of ours named Jim. And hmm. we're just about to get on the, the main drive to get on 95 and head back up north and all that stuff. This couple pulls up next to us. We're not from the area. I can't stress this enough. We're not from the area. <laughs> this couple pulls up next to us in their car. Andy's driving. I'm in the passenger seat. Jim's in the back. I'm ready to go. Andy's getting in the car, and that's when they stop. Excuse me. Do you guys know how to get to so-and-so, so-and-so? I turn to look at Jim, and I'm talking to him. And then I look, and Andy is looking at these people, and I see him making motions with his hands. And I kind of start listening closer. I was like, is he giving them directions? And Jim's like, I don't know. I don't. What the hell is he doing? And with the last part of the conversation, I, I out here outside the car as I hear, yeah, so go down there, two rights and left, you're there. Thank you, no problem. They take off, he gets in the car, closes the door, looks at me and goes, I wonder where they're going. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And off we went. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> that just sounds like the most convoluted shit I've ever heard. <laughs> so next like time you're in a place you don't know, and somebody asks you for the directions, you know what to do. 
<laughs> what a way to end this session. Uh, holy crap. Yeah. Uh, last uh, 20 or so minutes of epic stories from <laughs> all of us. Uh, holy crap. So, yeah, this session, this is going to be a whole episode, starting with <laughs> nice. the campfire. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for watching Minecraft Metal Treehouse. Uh, what the hell? I just noticed there's a stripped oak log. <laughs> right here let me fix that whoops there we go <laughs> anyway so uh we'll be back for another session uh, hopefully the next session we can get more branches going mm -hmm. and then eventually make the tip top with the leaves surrounding and maybe even up in that leaves area we'll make a little combat arena and then we're gonna leave some eyes <laughs> i you bastard <laughs> but uh anyways so thank you guys for watching Peace out and awesome. horns high. And I know Hannah, I know her opinion about this, but I'm sorry. Number four, Ghost Prequel. Screw you! Screw you! Die! <laughs> die! <laughs> um, okay. Get out! <laughs> no, I, I cannot. I cannot continue. <laughs> And <laughs> now she's okay. gone. Hannah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna probably. That's my number three. <laughs> you have no idea about music. Okay. 